Okay, after that passionate football discussion, we're going to take things easy now. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a special entertainment guest in the house, Kemi Lala Akindoju, actor, yeah. teacher. Yeah. Am I missing anything else? Producer. Producer. You actually director. sing on the side as well. Eh, so, in my spare time. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good. Always good to see you. Always good You're to You're one of you. those, quote-unquote, pure actors mm. who love stage. Yes, and we love the other platforms too, but... The stage is my home. I like I've always stage. found that sort of competition, well, I call it a competition, interesting, where they say uh, stage actors are really the actors. Ah. You guys on camera, ah. you make all the money, but I'm not saying you, it's your view. I know, but, but that's I'm just saying it's, it's a general opinion. Well, that's generally because of the, the, hard, the, the process and the techniques. So, the, like the rehearsal process, for example, you, you can dedicate two months for a production. And a play that's two hours long is very long. So two months of not doing any other thing and consistently rehearsing one script to perform it in one and a half hours. Yes. So you must, it's a lot, it's a huge sacrifice. And then for very little money, you yeah. know, <laughs> exactly. You put the very in oh, front yes, of it. very little money. <laughs> and then, so that's probably why. And then all the things you do when you get to rehearsals, you have to work out, yeah. you know. Some, some directors actually demand that you wear no accessory. I know a director that if you even wear earrings to his rehearsal, at the door, you would just drop everything. Like, you just drop everything because the director wants you to be naked. In your element. So that he can paint whatever he wants to paint on you. Interesting. So, yeah. so you definitely prefer stage to... I don't prefer. You like all of them? Yes. You're trying yeah, not to I... off the market. <laughs> 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 I get to make, but the techniques are so different. They yeah. vary. So I, it's very difficult to say one is better one, because they're so different. Yeah. Um, we're going to go uh, to your, the thing you do with actors and your little project. But I want to start off with, I mean, you won the Future Awards. When, yeah. What year was this now? 2000, 2010. 2010. Yes. As Best Actor? Yes, Actor of the Year. Actor of the Year. Yes. And you were doing mostly stage at the time. It I was doing only... You were doing only stage. So people were actually surprised. Like, okay, for a stage actor to beat all of these big names. I know. You know, it was, it was a pretty it big was, deal. It was I mean, epic. So it, it, was, was, it must mean something that you were doing something right. Yes. In fact, that was the... Winning the Future Awards was the, you know, that tick or that confidence you get, and you're like, okay, I think I'm doing something right. And then I was more comfortable to decide to go onto the big screen. I felt, okay, I had been trained well enough in the theater for five years, because I had done stage purely for five years at the time. Okay. So, that, you just came back from the United States. Yes. And I hear there's a future was angle to it, or future project angle. What, what, what was that about? Um, at the time that, you know, somebody from the... Um, embassy here saw me and you know what embassy the American embassy the American embassy okay. yes saw me and you know asked me to perform at some private event with the consulate general and you know they asked oh have you ever been we think you'll be a good candidate for the IVLP which is the International Visitors Leadership Program and you know I shared some of my dreams and my visions with them and then you know I told them I had won the future awards and immediately said oh I know the future project and you know he was like we'll research you <laughs> if you are worthy of us and I must say that the future project was very supportive because they gave they put in that good word and you know they were like in fact we nominate her and you know the process then that was in 2012 and then you had to fill forms and do an interview and um, get to be finally picked but it was you know the recommendation came in really handy I mean the story is very long but that was it and you know we filled the forms the future project was very helpful also in yeah, you know, the forms and getting ready and then in 2014 they said hey you made it. Come on, go. Come on, so go. So what, what was the trip about? What, what did you have to do when you went to America? Um, it was it's the International Visitors Leadership Program, but this was um, social change through the arts. So we were a group of 23 artists, different um, t um, areas of the arts. So filmmakers, actors, photographers, visual artists, museum um, curators, writers, special assistants to ministers of culture. Oh, you interesting. Know, from, yeah, <laughs> yeah, from all over the world who the American or the American society had noticed to be doing some kind of social change with their art. And so they were selected to come together, see how things are done in America, bring some of your culture, learn some things, look at possible collaborations amongst and within the countries, open your mind, you know. And so we went through things from um, policies in art 
to how things are funded, which is very important for somebody like me who's going into producing. So, you know, you know, you just sit at home and you're like, those people, they get money for everything. And then you realize how they get funding, how to involve the government. I teach as well, involving children with the arts and policies. It was really, really, really good. Great stuff. And, you know, you mentioned your social work there and what yeah. came to mind, of course, your open mic theater, yes, which fact, I'm a huge fan of. And most people who have been there are huge fans of it. Yeah. What informed this? Uh, for those who don't know, it's something you, you have like a free... Yes. It's, it's a, a free show, basically. It's a free show. Free stage. Free stage. But I put out a theme. Now, it started in 2011 and it was inspired, I must say, by Ugo Maud Adegoke of The Lifehouse. And I used to, 2011, I like to say, was a very, very dull year for me career-wise. I wasn't really working. I wasn't really getting jobs. <laughs> After winning the future, Awards was in 2010. <laughs> you know? Interesting. And I know, right? <laughs> and um, I was just, I would go to the life house and just sit down. And, you know, she would tell me, Lala, you are here. You have so much ideas and talent. Th there is a space. Do something. And I'm like, no, I can't produce yet because I don't have the money. And I have seen, I've gone through so much with productions when they promise you money and the money doesn't yeah. come. And I don't, I don't want to put people through that. So until I get my big money, I'm never going to produce. I now said, except it's an open mic theatre format. And she said, why not? And then the idea didn't sound great. I called a few of my mentors. I called Auntie Jockey. I called Ketensho. I called Bikia, you know, a few people. And they said, great, we love it. So I said, okay, we'll hold the first edition. It was August 2011 at the Life House. I begged everybody I knew, you know, just come. Just perform something from something you've done before. It was for actors. And I realized actors don't have a place to showcase talent. Yeah. Actors don't have a place to be, there's no place to shop for talent if there are no auditions. So writers don't have places to test new material. Up and coming actors don't have a place to deal with their issues, stage issues, fright, and all of that. The already established actor doesn't have a place to see what the young people are doing and to meet. So I'm like, this is exactly what Open Mic Theatre seeks to do be a one stop shop for talent, a hub where actors network. And in the last three years, it has become that people have gotten jobs from Open Mic Theatre. Directors just come, they'll be like, oh, Lala, I want that person that, was, that did this monologue or did that piece in my next nice. film. And that's been going on. We have an Open Mic Theatre channel on YouTube where you can watch some of the clips. So even actors, who are not working for money yet can begin to build a showreel for themselves. And some people make mistakes, they do mess up. But we clap for everybody at Open Mic Theatre. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yes. I like the sort of passion you, you, you come with when you're talking about it. Are you happy <laughs> with the way things are going? I am very happy. In fact, I must say, at the last edition, which was two weeks ago, um, the, the theme for the edition was the homegrown edition where I said all materials performed should be written from Nigeria. And I, was, I would um, be more excited about new material. Let's discover new writers. And it was, it was amazing. As in, terror culture was great. We rented extra chairs and there was still no standing space. You would know, right? And you know, the, because it's free, yeah. you know, people ask me, how do I? Truth is, there hasn't been any kind of sponsorship yet, but I believe in it. And I, at the end of every edition of my theater, I go home with zero naira in my account. But um, on, on that day, you know, Kunia Falayo, whom we all know, came, and you know, Dakori performed, Lucy UKJ, and then, you know, we're just talking, and he said, you know what, okay, I will support you and we will be recording every edition of Open Mic Theatre. So this is even like the po first public announcement I'm making that Kulia Falayo has become a partner. The Kulia Falayo. Golden Effects Productions has become a partner with Open Mic Theatre. And nice. that is, a, that's a senior colleague helping the next generation, I must say. Because yeah. it just took him five minutes. Like, you know what, we'll come with cameras. Yeah. We'll come with crew. We'll edit for you. Are you happy? I'm like... <laughs> Over nice. happy. So things are looking up. Obviously. Oh yes, they are looking up. Well, uh, let's get a little personal now. Okay. And I know you mentioned <laughs> Osu Keje there, and I, I want to ask about Osu Keje. It's it a very can. interesting it dynamic can. of. Uh, I don't know what it is, but I know I've heard whispers and I've seen things. <laughs> what is it with you and Osu Keje? Ibuka, really? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm going to kill you after this interview. But there's nothing though. What where besties? You know that your besto kind of. No, you, I don't. <laughs> that besto that you have, that you know, that's the person that if you uh, if you kill somebody, you call. You know okay. that you know that kind of person. Yeah. They are not afraid they're going to judge you, and then you guys, you are just dogs. That's you know, we're just dogs. We're like two boys, and that's it. And we've been friends for over what ten years and everything. So I don't know what you've seen. Oh, so are you okay. single? Yes, I'm single. Is he single? Ah, and I'm just <laughs> trying to make sure we are. I understand. <laughs> I am single, and about his status, he will tell you when you see him. <laughs> so you're not dating us, you Keja, you're saying? I'm not dating us, you You never Keja. dated him? Never, actually. Never even almost dated him. Is it in the horizon, though? 
No. You know, there's this talk about <laughs> friend zoning your future right? <laughs> husband. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it might just be. Well, to the, to, with the <laughs> sight I have, there's nothing happening, nothing about to happen. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's talk about your on-screen career now. You okay. shot a movie, interestingly, last year, which a lot of us are looking forward to. I know. I know the Sickle Cell Day just passed. Yes, on and Thursday. The, yeah, and the movie was about, you know, Sickle, Sickle Cell, Cell and, sorry, called Dazzling Mirage. Yeah. By Tunde. Kelani. The Tunde Kelani. The Tunde yeah. Kelani, yes. When is it supposed to come out? Um, let's give or take a month. A month plus it will be premiered and um, i'm also looking forward to seeing it honestly um and i must say that right now seems to be the biggest thing in my career because even with the teasers and the trailers that have been released the feedback has been amazing and more importantly understanding the life of people that live with sickle cell it's not i mean i i was cast in the role in 2011 and I knew I was going to play it for two, three years plus. And so I had to begin to research and, you know, how to be a sickler and everything. Yeah. And it opened my eyes to, I have two friends who shared their lives with me. And, my God, they became heroes instantly. You know, one of them, for 21 days in her life at a certain age, took seven injections every day. For 21 days, seven injections every day. And, um, yes, yeah, so that film is, we're looking forward to it. Is that your first lead? Yes, lead, yeah. on, on camera, yes, yes. And how was shooting? I mean, every, I know. every actor I think wants to work with Tunde Kalani. I know, right? Because even when we were shooting and the, the posts were out on social media, people were congratulating me that, you know, even some of my senior colleagues that, Lala, don't joke with this thing. <laughs> you better, I need, everybody wants to work with this man. And I must say, it was a, an experience of a lifetime. Tunde Kalani is a father first. Yes. And then you cannot mistake the fact that he, he's, you know, maybe he's about the technical side, that he doesn't pay attention to your performance. So he already rehearses, you know, and he expects you to have done your homework. Yeah. You know, when he blocks, he says, move this way, move. He doesn't expect that you will forget when we're shooting. And then I know we had a few um, conflicts. Like I wanted, I remember one particular scene, I didn't want to drop on the floor. And he said, drop on the floor. I thought it was <laughs> being too dramatic. And he said, no, you we need to, yes, floor. you will drop on the floor because we're trying to get the emotion of the audience. We need them to cry. And I'm like, oh, okay. sorry. <laughs> Let me drop. <laughs> <laughs> I drop, you know, and then, but his production values are amazing. From how, I mean, I would get on set and then AD is waiting, my breakfast is waiting, everything amazing. Closing time, he doesn't shoot too late. You know, go home, go and rest, come back tomorrow morning. Yeah. It was great. Great stuff. I, I know it's asked about whether you're happy. I, I want about the industry now, stage, yes. film, Nollywood. Are you General. happy with where things are? Yes. Right now? I'm industry? excited. I'm excited. I'm happy. I, I mean, things are happening. Quality is getting better. We're paying attention to detail. We're paying attention to performances, to script, to content. When we see something empty, we know to move away from it. I'm more excited. I mean, yesterday, Giddy Up A production I worked in as casting director and now associate producer mm -hmm. on, okay. you know, launched. And even that, everybody was, and everything was Nigerian. The average age on set was 30. And excellent work. Yeah. So I'm excited. This industry, everybody should look at us. We're going up. Great way to wrap things up. Thank you very much, Kemi. Good luck with everything you're going to be doing going forward. Thank Looking forward to so the much. premiere of Dazzling Mirage. Yes. And thanks for joining me today. You're welcome. <laughs> Remember, as I always say, you can join the conversation on Twitter at Wayanaja TV. It's the handle. The hashtag is rubbing minds. You can also visit the website, wayanaja.com slash TV. Remember, you've never seen young people talk like this before. I'll see you next week. Tell